Uh, today's mock check ride, mm -hmm. uh, or mock oral, I guess. Uh, we're gonna kind of hopefully uh, set it up as if it's uh, a real check ride. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, we'll, we're, I've asked you to prepare a scenario. We'll take a look at the scenario, and then as the scenario progresses, you know, we'll talk through different topics and different subject matters. I'll ask you questions, and uh, you, know, you just respond with uh, the information that you have. If you don't know something, hey, that's okay. It's all right. You know, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to memorize everything, right? Mm -hmm. A good thing is, is you want to know where to find it if you yeah. don't know something, right? Uh, and so hopefully today what we can do is help where the knowledge is strong, so where you can say, okay, I don't have to focus on that, but maybe for focus the, uh, you know, the um, lesser knowledge and then kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. so, but that's yeah. it. Uh, so basically what's going to happen is in uh, the check right scenario, you're going to meet your examiner. He's going to be uh, you know, real nice and real pleasant, just kind of make casual conversation mm -hmm. to kind of lighten the mood and make you feel comfortable and, and, yeah. and ready and give you confidence and all that. Uh, he's going to ask before the check ride even begins. He's going to actually uh, he's going to ask it to see all your documentation, all your IDs, your medical. He's going to verify the aircraft is all uh, ready to go as far as the check ride is concerned, mm -hmm. uh, and that it's an airworthy aircraft. Uh, he's going to make sure that you have your application all ready and it's properly filled out, and the instructor signed it. He's going to make sure you have your logbook, your endorsements, everything ready to go to make sure that you are indeed eligible for the examination and mm -hmm. can take the check ride. Uh, and once all that's done, then he's going to kind of give you lay out the grounds for the check ride and be like, hey, here's what I expect from you. Here's what you can expect from me. Here's the possible outcomes of the uh, check ride, which uh, he'll go over with you. And uh, then once all that, he'll or once he completes all that, he'll ask you, hey, do you have any questions? And it's like, oh, no, I think I'm good to go. And then Basically, the check ride begins after that. So it's a very, I want to say kind of an informal thing. It's just a very relaxed atmosphere. Yeah. You know, I want to make sure that you're set up and ready to go and that, uh, you know, everything is uh, on the up and up. So on that note, why don't we start out with your documentation? So if you have your photo ID uh, and then your medical, and uh, I see you got your logbook here, which is great, yep. which uh, at that point uh, in time, you will have a lot more endorsements that you have than you actually have now. And then earlier we kind of talked about too what to do with your logbook as far as adding up the hours and uh, you know signing the pages and such and making sure that's all good. Oh, here's the ID cool. medical hey, medical. All right. So what class medical is this? Uh, first class medical. First class medical. How long is it good for? It's good for, it gives me airline transport pilot, although I'm not an airline transport pilot, uh, but it gives me ATP privileges for 12 months if I'm under, uh, from one to 39. And if I'm over 40, it's only six months. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going for what type of uh, license? today uh, private pilot private pilot so how long is that good for, to, for it that? should be good for 60 months yeah cool. if i'm on from 1 to 39 okay yeah cool cool all right do you have your student uh, pilot cert as well yes i do awesome very good i'm gonna sign that oh you already did my bad this is barely legible like not not legible i um, can't really see it very well yeah but now you're good dude so cool all right yeah it looks good one thing the examiner might check, depending on the examiner, is uh, whether the uh, the weight and the height and everything matches with the certificate on the application mm -hmm. or the uh, pilot certificate. Some examiners are kind of sticklers about that, where they want to make sure everything matches mm -hmm. up exactly. Yeah. Other examiners don't care so much, uh, but uh, just a side note, so you really don't have to worry about that. Your instructor will walk you through with that. Cool. Very good. All right. Excellent. Well, that looks good. And then, uh, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, we'll say, okay, good. So everything's good. We got the plane. Uh, what aircraft did we are we planning on using today? It's going to be a Cessna Skyhawks. Cessna Skyhawk. R172. Okay. R172. Awesome. Yep. All right. Uh, what? Uh, so I see you got Navlog here. Let's see. And I've got from Waco. Or there it is. Redbird to Waco. And Waco back to Redbird. Very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, do you have any weight and balance information? Mm -hmm. I, the flight? I do not actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's I fine. I don't have the weight and balance. Okay, that's fine. So yeah, in the check ride, you definitely want to go in yeah. and doing that. Do you know how to fill it out? Yes, uh, I do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, we'll tell you what. Why don't we? Why don't we do a weight and balance real mm -hmm. quick, right? Yeah. For this uh, weight and balance, uh, mm -hmm. what we'll do is we'll just plan on weight and balance from Waco to Redbird, right? Mm -hmm. So since I'm in it, I think uh, so. The plan was for. You to fly from Redbird to Waco, pick me up, and then fly me back to yeah. Redbird for our check ride scenario, mm -hmm. right? Type yeah. of a thing. But uh, well, I'm not going to worry about that. That's it, that obviously wouldn't happen. You wouldn't be transporting a DPE for a check ride. It's just would, a, yeah, it's yeah, just a scenario, right? Yeah. Because especially considering the fact that you're uh, you know, you're not even a private yet. But aside from that, 
Uh, for this particular scenario, we'll just run through, I'll have you just run through and do the weight and balance real quick. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where do we find the weight and balance in the, in the POH? Mm -hmm. That's right, for that particular aircraft, mm -hmm. yes. right? Yeah, very good, okay. Great, so uh, for me, you can use uh, 170 and then uh, assume I have a 20 pound bag of uh, cargo that I need to bring with me okay, cool. uh, to go from there. So uh, I will let you go ahead and do that just real quick. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll uh, just wait. And Say we have 30, 38 gallons full full tank. Well, here, use your, use your uh, 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 nav log here, right? So mm -hmm. how, how much fuel do you actually need to fly this particular leg? Uh, I need 30, oops. Oh, from... Uh, yeah, from Waco to... From Waco to back, yeah. it should be... Oh, if minutes. you didn't, well, let's see. Which one did you calculate? Oh, here. Let's do this one then. We'll go from. Well, I mean, like I do, I do have the duration for this one that's as okay. well. Okay, okay so that's fine. For quick reference, for you quick just, reference. Yeah, let's okay, just use you. this one. That's I got totally you. So right. I'm using only seven point five. Okay. Okay, seven point five. So what is our fuel requirements for our day VFR flight here? Our fuel requirements. Uh, that means you have to go get to your destination with at least thirty minutes of reserve fuel le like left in the tank. Cool. Uh, but that's just. It's just FAA minimums. Like personal minimums, personally, I'd, I'd like to have like an hour in the tank. Cool, yeah. very good, and, all right. And at night, it's gonna be 45. So where would we go to translate that from an hour into how much fuel we need? We basically go to our fuel burn, basically. Okay, where do um, we find that? Uh, it's gonna be in the POH. Okay, cool. And, and we go, I can actually pull it over right now. We can cruise, it's gonna be a while. I don't have these stapled together. Ran out of staples, so where's it? Let's say we're at 2,000, 4,000 uh, pressure altitude. If we're at 2,300 RPM, standard day, we should be burning around 6.5 gallons. Okay. And cool. every hour. And I usually round up just to be safe. Like, like this seven, it's not really, at 2,300 RPM, it's not really what we're burning. It's just extra because I just like to be safe. Cool, so, very good, awesome. So, Great that you know that performance, yeah. excellent. Okay, so that's based on cruise though, right? So that's 30 minutes cruise. of cruise, very good. Uh, and then we have to add taxi. Taxi, like things. right here I got 1.1 .1, uh, okay. gallons for climb out because I have uh, my uh, my set uh, altitude at 3,500 feet and 1.1 for taxi. Okay, cool, all yeah. right. So total burn, uh, or let's use your personal minimums with all your fuel calculated. Uh, for uh, the amount of fuel that you're actually going to be carrying on mm -hmm. board. Cool. So add all that up, and then uh, you can put that uh, okay. number in. So there. that means uh, be left with an hour. Say so. Basically, be left with about seven gallons of the tank. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So whatever you need for the taxi, the cruise, mm -hmm. uh, or the climb, cruise, descent, yeah, we'll just taxi, and these. then with the seven mm -hmm. so on, gallons. Just to be left with seven gallons, uh, I'd carry around fourteen and a half, fifteen gallons from Redbird to Waco. It's gonna be. Oops. 15 times 6, 90 pounds. And 90 times 47.8, which is the arm, 47.83. Ramp weight is going to be 1854.9 plus. Now I fill out flight plan. Excellent. All right. So I see here. So you got for engine start, taxi, and takeoff. That, that's climb, that scenario, yeah. uh, they gave us a scenario that's climbed to 6,000 feet. Right, right. And we're going to be gone. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking at the engine start, taxi, and takeoff. Yeah, so uh, I, I use this value right here for, for the taxi, but for this, that's for 6,000 feet. So I just right. cut that in half, so I just set 1.1. Okay. Because I already rounded up. I know that's a bit less than half. I already rounded up, so I'm not uh, too worried about, about like the extra gallons being too accurate. Because I already rounded up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Also, you can't be very inaccurate but it's uh, not not very inaccurate in this yeah it's good scenario. to overestimate yeah 1854 sorry if i'm taking a bit longer no no you're good take your time take yeah, your time no rush don't rush all right cool uh chances are he may the examiner may have you do an actual problem in the check ride whether it be performance or whether it be mm -hmm. some sort of nav calculation or or whatever the case may be yeah. so so you know don't rush it always take your time mm -hmm. You know, make sure you do it right and think right. through the think through the, right, cool, uh, the cool. problem. So you're doing good, man. No rush. All right. And that's for taxi. Takeoff weight is going to be minus six pounds. Minus six plus six is going to be 1944. And that right there is going to be the moment. It's going to be 75, 888.38. We're in 7.5. No, wait. It's not times 7.5. Times six, so minus 45. 45 is minus two. So landing weight gonna be three, 
0.9938.9 minus 45 pounds. So that anyway is going to be 1893.9 and the moment is going to be 79.79914. Alright, now our moment are so this is gonna be I should highlighter. So zero fuel weight right here. Oh gosh, it's pens down out on me. <laughs> and then takeoff weight is gonna be right here. And then landing weight is gonna be right here. And then plug these values in to Oh, appreciate it, man. Yeah. Plug these out values in right here. 1854. So it's kind of in the middle right here somewhere. With 70 around 76. Up. For right here, uh, for takeoff weight is going to be 19. So 19. So right here, but 80,000. Oh no, 79. Here. Landing weight is going to be 1890. 77. Yep. So we are in the normal category. Cool. Excellent. Very good. So does it does it matter if you go utility or? It doesn't matter. Utility. That's like for for like more extreme maneuvers. So I mean, like I'd say it matters. Like you you'd, you'd want to be in the normal category. Like most of the time, you, utility. It's just not not really. It's just based on our needs. We don't really need to be in the utility category. But if there's one value in the utility category, there's something wrong with the weight and balance i'd say all right okay so we've got our landing takeoff landing weight calculated first be in the envelope so good with that very good all right i like your fuel burn there so you got seven and a half gallons for uh, the, all the taxi plus 1.1 for all the taxi and then the climb out and all your waypoints very good excellent okay then we got all that do you have your uh now i'm sorry uh four flight uh, where yes. you punched in a lot of these points here that we can kind of take a look at your route here. Yes. Oh, actually, don't have it, but I can. Okay, I can make it pretty. It can make it. Okay, pretty that's fast, fine. Yeah. If you if you want to punch it in real quick, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. No. No rush. No worries. So, okay. CT. Oops. I do the aerial map. Okay, wait, because it lets me see like landmarks, like lakes, and all that stuff. So always when I'm going south, my first landmark is going to be Waxahachie. And that's characterized by Midway being over to the right. And my next uh, one is going to be um, Milford. There's nothing really much. There's no lakes on the way over here to characterize. So I'll already know that I-35 is going to be like on my left. Or I'm just going to be over I-35 for like a lot of the flight. So that's going to be a good reference. And I'm going to reach Milford right here. And I can look to my right. Um, it's called uh, Hillsboro Municipals off to the right. And also... If I, from Milford, I can see, if I just turn it this way right here, because I'm headed this way, I can see that this reservoir right here, it looks like this, so I drew this reservoir. Like I can, I'll be able to see in the distance, because it's like more, tw it's like 20 miles to my, uh, to my southwest. So that's just how it looks like. My perspective is 20 miles, I can see pretty easily. If it's like 10 miles of visibility that day, it should be pretty easy to like, uh, just make this out. So it should be off to like my, my two o'clock when I'm at Milford. Then I fly over to Kilo, Lake, uh, Kilo Reservoir right here. And then I fly directly south to uh, Waco Regional, which I can, I can like, the first thing I look at is Lake Waco. And I know it's on the north side of Lake Waco. Okay. Yep. All right. So this is basically the... That's the route. Excellent. All right. So you got your points. Not, not precise point. It's just like how... Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. that's fine. Uh, but you you do need points for to calculate your, your yeah, and I, I particular did, I headings and fuel burn yeah, and all that. that. So that, mm -hmm. yeah, no, that's fine. I, I mean, throwing it on there, that's yeah, uh, not a problem that you got uh, that thrown in there pretty quick. Good. Yeah. All right. So the different types of navigation we have are uh, we have pilotage and dead reckoning. Mm -hmm. And at first, when he asked for two forms of uh, navigation, I was like, let me just do one pilotage, one dead, dead, dead right. reckoning, which is kind of it. Kind of seemed weird to me because they both go hand in hand. So they I kind of did one pilotage and the other was VOR and pilotage. Very good. And I've never done VOR, but it's pretty simple. Where's the other one? Cool. Yeah. So so if you did do VOR, yeah. how would you, how would you, so do, how would you execute Basically, that? I'd, I'd take off and then I'd tune my VOR and for, in this case, I'd take off back because on the way back, it's uh, from Waco to uh, Redbird, it's going to be a VOR pilotage uh, flight. So I'd. Tune to. Have you seen the? Have you seen the other one? The other navlog? Because uh, oh yeah, right here. 
Yeah, tune to the AC, the ACT, the Wake Original VOR, tune VOR2, and it's gonna, at first, it's gonna indicate a two, because uh, zero, one, zero is gonna be like, it's gonna take me direct to a Redbird, because basically how I knew, so let me just clear this, I just, D, oops, I'm sorry about that, I'm just getting a sec, D, and then, okay, ACT. Just direct it's lines, just, It's just line. direct line to okay. Redbird. And on the way over there, I basically, got waypoints these aren't like actual i can go to the ch i'm pretty sure i can go to the chart supplement chart supplement and then you. just go to the vor and just, and just okay uh, do, well do, well let me ask you this do vors have set ranges where their uh reliability is uh, not in question nine yeah yeah it's not in question yeah but maybe like over 200 i'd assume 200 miles 200 nautical miles okay that's like more like iffy at that point. Okay. And that's why, I, and it's not too long of a flight, so I'm not too worried, but if I do get, uh, what's it called? If I do have any problems with the, with like connectivity with this VOR right here, I can always connect to the Maverick uh, VOR right here in DFW. And it's on the, if I go from the Maverick VOR to Redbird, it's gonna be, it's gonna be on the 136 radio. So I just tune to that radio and I just, Follow the needle. Oh, sorry about that. I follow the needle, and then nope, okay, I right should now. reach the. I should reach Redbird. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let me do this real quick, and we're recording. Again. All right. We're good. Okay. So uh, let's see. Let's back up a little bit here. Kind of resetting for the camera. Do do. There we go. All right. So we were talking about going uh, tuning in Maverick VR as a backup. The 138 radial. One three six. One three six. I'm sorry. One three six radial. From Maverick. Okay, now would you follow that radio from Waco to Redbird? Yeah. Basically, if I'm over here, I just tune to it and I just follow the. Actually, oh yeah. So the, now, now thinking about it, the second radio, or I need a second VR so I can pinpoint like the other, the other axis. Because if I just follow the needle to that radio, I can just end up anywhere on this path. So in hindsight, I I got it wrong at first, but. I'd tune to two VORs, the Maverick and the Cowboy VOR. And the Cowboy VOR, I would tune So using to the, two VORs, what, so what does that do? Basically, it basically pinpoints like one point. Perfect, mm -hmm. yeah. all right. Okay, good, excellent. All righty, okay. Do you want me to find out like what? Nope, no, we're good, to? dude, uh, for now, that's fine. Cool, all right. Uh, so with this basically using, let's just say we're using the Waco VOR, mm -hmm. right? So using the Waco VOR all the way to Redbird, you can use mm -hmm. that to calculate your fuel burn needed, right? Because yeah. it's just a direct line. If yeah, it is. Just it's just a direct line, 66 right? nautical miles. Yeah. And I'm going okay. basically And then you're cross-checking with these different... Yeah, it's just visual little visual reference. Yeah. yeah, cool. All mm -hmm. right, very good. So yeah, that's how you could uh, do that particular fuel burn for that leg but cool yeah not bad i'm just gonna jump in right here a little bit yeah so it sounds like you've obviously haven't done the vor navigation yet yeah. which is totally fine i mean uh, hopefully you can do that before you check right and actually get a little bit of experience mm -hmm. with that but you do know a little bit about vors and, and how to operate them which is great and then we'll, we'll kind of go over afterwards how to look at what the reliability is and what you can actually expect mm -hmm. from that but anyway okay so cool all right very good okay now let's go ahead and do let's look up a airport diagram for Waco. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to pull that up on your four flight. So we've got, we talked about the nav log. That's great. All your fuel burn, your distances, your, your uh, points. And there's a lot more stuff we could actually go over here too, uh, talking about uh, how you uh, came up with your altitude for the direction of flight and for a particular compass heading mm -hmm. for your dead reckoning. Mm -hmm. But anyway, all right, so we're here at Waco yeah. and uh, we're gonna take off, we're gonna come back here to Redbird, right? So, okay, where'd you go to pull up the uh, four flight? Well, I just clicked on this and then- Oh, I see, okay. Yeah. All right, well, here, I'll tell you what, let's do this then. Let's see if I can figure it out here. Let's see, so. Go to Waco, go to Procedure, and then you can pull up the airport diagram right there. Or flight diagram, there it is. Nope, one right below that. Oh. There you go. Oh, there. There it is. Yep. So this actually has a lot more information than the four flight diagram yeah. a little bit and uh, pertinent to kind of more of our uh, taxi and uh, other information that we uh, potentially could need. Mm -hmm. But anyway, cool. All right, so let's say we're uh, over here at the FBO. Hey, look at that, it's even labeled FBO for us. Yeah. And uh, looking at the airspace, uh, so what, what type of airspace is uh, Waco? 
Uh, Waco is uh, class Delta. Delta. All right. So is that controlled, non uncontrolled? Uh, it's controlled. Controlled airspace. Mm -hmm. Right. Very good. So basically, we got to talk to ATC, right? Yeah. Have to okay. To so let's say we wanted to depart runway 32. Uh, what would your radio communication be and uh, how would you request that? You said I'm, I'm not the FBO, right? Yes, sir. I'd say Waco, Waco Ground, Skyhawk, 915, Cessna, Cessna Skyhawk, 915 Hotel with weather uh, ready for taxi. And then they'd say Cessna Sky, uh, Sky 915 Hotel, yep. tax V, V, Alpha. Okay, yeah, so I'll tell you what they'll okay. say there. So they'll say, okay, uh, Cessna, was it 915 A Hotel? Yep. All right, taxi runway 32 via Alpha and uh, Alpha 4, Bravo 3, Bravo. Mm -hmm. So what would your taxi route then would be? And what would you do only receiving the instruction that I just gave you? I would basically... Say I just basically repeat it after uh, repeat what they said to me. Okay. okay. Runway three two taxi via Alpha Alpha four cross runway one Bravo three and Bravo. Okay. So yeah. did ATC give you the clearance to cross based no, on they, what I just said? Based on what you said, no, they didn't actually. No, they didn't. No, they, okay. They didn't so so how would you taxi then? What would you do? I'll, I'll taxi and hold short of uh, runway one. Cool. On All right. Alpha 4. Yeah. Very good. So on Alpha four. Right. So very good. So in order to cross any runway, what are the words you have to hear? Cross runway. You have to say clear to cross runway. Yeah. There you go. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So I bring that scenario up to see how, you know, you would handle a, a particular situation, which mm -hmm. ATC doesn't give you clearance, but yet they give you the full route clearance mm -hmm. to a particular runway, which they often do. Uh, they'll say a taxi here. Most of the time though, they will throw in either hold short or clear to cross. Mm -hmm. um, if not, if they don't say something like that, maybe they're busy. And mm -hmm. I've had this happen where they're busy and they, they, they kind of get distracted with other aircraft too. And they don't realize they didn't give a clearance or whatever. So us as pilots, we're responsible you to wanna, make sure. Yeah, you want to assume. You always want to assume. Just yeah, to very hold good. Sword. So hold sore that. Very good. All right. So let's say we wanted to part runway 32, right? Um, mm -hmm. So actually, well, what is the weather? Let's see. What's the weather here? So actually, they'll probably be using runway. Uh, well, I'll tell you what. I'll let you do it. What or current? Waco information. Uh, we're just going to look at the METAR. METAR, yeah, very good. All right, so what does that say? Uh, METAR says that at, on the 12th day of the month, 1351 Zulu, visibility is going to be five statue miles, overcast, overcast 14, uh, overcast 1400, which is kind of, it is it is VFR, but it's question, it's very like pretty low. So do we have um, a term for that? It's marginal VFR. Marginal, yeah, marginal cool, VFR. all right. Yeah. And then for that, that what that these are just remarks right here. That's the, for the weather. That should be okay. It, what, yeah. what else? What other important information do we have here, though? Nine two. Uh, the, oh, that's the altimeter. That's going to be two. Ah. So it's basically standard over there. Right yeah, now. standard. Yeah. Well, it's standard pressure. What about yeah. the temperature? Temperature is going to be twenty four degrees Celsius. Okay, good. Is that standard? No, that is. That's like ten. Uh, so we got standard pressure, standard. but not standard, standard temperature, temperature, right? Yeah. yeah. Cool. All right. Hey, so look at a few things here. What, what is this BR here? I'd assume big rain. How big is it? Okay, where would you go to find that? Or where could you go? Where, I, where could I go to find... What BR what, means, yeah. BR, I can go to the... I'd, I'd, I'd say the FAA website. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Start there. At least uh, that would be a good place to start. Cool. Okay, we'll talk about that later. Good. Excellent. And then uh, looking at this here, mm -hmm. so we got a temperature of 24 What's the what's the slash twenty three? So uh, base basically like it's it's between twenty four and twenty three. Okay, all right. And then you mentioned we've got standard altimeter here. All righty. I'm just gonna I'm taking notes, dude. Good yeah. or bad? So yeah, you're gonna find a lot of examiners do that. They're gonna just yeah. be taking notes, stuff they want to cover, stuff for them because they have to. You know, they're required in order uh, not necessarily to take notes, but they're required to uh, to have a a, a plan set a plan of action for their check ride. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes guys will take notes saying, "Hey, I yeah. talked about this or <laughs> talked about that or whatever." Yeah. But uh, that's all right. Cool. All right. So. The reason why I came to the METAR is based on this information and the Waco airport diagram, which we can kind of swap over to that. Whoops, actually be in place. There we go. So what runway do you think uh, will we expect to use based on the current weather conditions? Uh, I'd expect to use Runway 14. 14? Okay. Yep, 14 because wind is going to be bearing 160. Okay. At first I was going to say 19, but I was like, no, it's 14 because that's that's a less, okay. less cross. Could you use 19? I could, yeah, I could use one nine. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because well, I'd assume they'd be using one four and one nine. Definitely not one or or what's it called uh, three two. Yeah. Why? That's the, those are tailwinds. Yeah. Be a tailwind. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Very good. So uh, based on this, what what's our uh, runway distance here? Runway distance is uh, for runway one four is gonna be uh, it's gonna be fifty one hundred basically, and the 
runway 19 is going to be 7100. Okay, now is all that available for landing? Yes, there are. I don't see any uh, displaced uh, displaced uh, zones or like just for, reserved for taxi and takeoff. So yes, this is basically all for Okay. Landing. Where would you go to verify that? Uh, I'd go to what's called the airport diagram or like the chart supplement. Yeah. Okay. And I'd look on basically the individual runway lengths because there are different lengths for each runway because some runways are are like on the diagram they say they're like 51 in this case they're like 5100 feet but they might be like for maybe one for, for example one for i'm not i'm not sure on this diagram it doesn't really well do you want to take a minute and try to pull it up and see that way you can verify yeah uh, let me just try to find the chart supplement with a uh, procedure not that oops i actually don't know where the chart supplement is okay yeah. cool well let's pull it up we've got let's see if, if, if and i can remember where it is da -da 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 -da. All right, go to, there you go. Okay, there it is. Yeah, there you go. So that's cool. how you find it in four flight. Mm -hmm. So AFD, do you remember what that, do you know what that stands for? Probably not. They, they kind of phased it out. So it's, you are correct. It's more, it's chart supplement now. Yeah. Uh, it used to stand for uh, airport facility directory, uh -huh. uh, which is what they used to call it. And now it's the chart supplement. So very good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So let's pull up this for so runway, which runway you want to take Runway one four. One four. Okay. So what do we have? What are our distances? Our distances, I know these are... Distances up here. Let me just search for them. Or right. clear distances. There it is. Okay, runway one four. So fifty one for take off. Take off. Two one as dust. Yeah. So they all look available uh, landing, uh, landing and take off. They're both the same. So okay. yes. So what is this? What does this stand for? This T O R A. Take off roll available. All right, cool. And it's uh, what the... Uh, so it's, yeah, basically 51. Okay. 51 through yeah. Cool. All right, so that's the distance we have mm -hmm. to depart, mm -hmm. right? To actually for runway available for takeoff. Yeah. All right, very good. So why is that important? Well, uh, because say, say this, say that it was like a lesser value. Like it's important because if you're flying a plane uh, and it, ha it has like certain capabilities like ground roll capabilities it needs a certain amount of runway to land or take off so if you're just looking at the diagram and it says oh it's 5100 feet and your air, your airplane say your airplane require if it requires 5100 feet to take off you'd say oh that's enough i can take off but you can't you don't really know if there's a displaced area that's just left for i mean that's just for le left for takeoff and taxi say you want to land at that i'm at I'm sorry, I meant, meant to land. Oh, I can land at that airport that requires 5,100 feet to land for my plane. But you don't know that that place has a displaced area just left for takeoff and taxi. And that the actual available like landing distance is like 4,500 feet. Okay. So, that's, so that, for our particular so scenario to, here, we got, uh, what did you say our weight was? What was our takeoff weight? Should be... Takeoff weight is, where is it, where is the takeoff weight? It's gonna be 1938. All right, 1938. So how would we know if that is enough room for us? We'd go to the POH, five, section five, let me just go to it. Right here, take, no, that's takeoff distance. You wanna take off distance, you said? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Take off distance, all right. Uh, so right now, pressure altitude over there, is standard pressure, and for every uh, 10 degrees increase, or 10, yeah, 10 degrees increase in uh, in temperature, we want to, here, where did you say? And we're just gonna take the average of these two, 980 plus 1050, 0 plus 1050, then divided by two. That's gonna be our required takeoff roll, so. Why divided by two? Because we're just averaging it, averaging it out. Because right now, over there, it's 24 degrees Celsius. And uh, these values are for 20 degrees Celsius and, and 30 degrees Celsius, so I'm just averaging it out. I'm just getting the value between them. So, our so basically that runaway is more than long enough to uh, for our takeoff. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, so we've got here. You've mentioned uh, pressure altitude, uh, which is actually kind of cool. Standard today, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, at least down there in Waco. Very good. And then we're adjusting for the temperature. Do you know what we're actually calculating when we calculate that? Well, wait, calculate what type what? of altitude? The pressure altitude, yes. Um, basically, basically what the atmosphere. So pressure pressure altitude is basically what the atmosphere is like. It's the pressure that you are at right now compared to compared to like a standard day. Say like today, right now, our pressure altitude right now, right here, or not pressure altitude. Our altimeter reading right now is uh, two eight nine two. Actually, no, two three nine two. Basically, our pressure altitude would be like a thousand 
feet higher than standard. So basically if we're on the surface and our pressure altitude at the airport is, or our altimeter setting is 3092, we'd be at a pressure altitude of 1500 instead of 500. Okay, so we're, we, we've got the pressure altitude, yeah. right? Uh, and then what are we calculating when we add in the, when we factor in the, oh shoot. Okay, that's just again. All right, so I'm back, rewind. All right, all right, there we go. Okay, so we talked about pressure altitude, right? So when we take pressure altitude and we factor in the temperature, mm -hmm. what altitude are we calculating? Oh, we'll factor in the temperature, it's gonna be density altitude. Very good, yeah. density altitude, all right, good. So all of this, these performance charts are all based on what type of altitude? Density altitude. Density altitude, yeah. very good, because that basically tells us what? Uh, basically what the air, what the aircraft thinks it's performing in. There you well. go. Very good. All right. So one thing I noticed uh, you did good on is you were checking these notes and distances, right? So, so based on these distances, is this distance that we're going to require based on our, oh, here it is, based on our takeoff weight? No, they're not. They're just, based they're, based, they're based on 2,300. Uh, 2,300, there you go, it says right there, maximum weight, 2,300 pounds, mm -hmm. right, yeah. Very good, cool, all right, so you got performance down, you got you know how to do that, excellent. And that's also, that's also uh, with uh, perfect like short field takeoff, like with, like perfect pilot technique right here as well. So do you have perfect pilot technique? I hope. I'm like a private pilot, I mean like, I'm not, I'm not like, like veteran standard, but I, I say I, I veteran. What's a veteran? I just joking. Person. All right, just stop talking, dude. Okay. No, basically, no. Yeah. All right, so so kind of cutting this out. Um, basically, yeah. I mean, the response would be that. Well, no, I'm not gonna be perfect all the time, every mm -hmm. time, right? So I, if if I'm close, I'm gonna add some. You want to you want to have a buffer, there, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. You want to have some buffer factor, especially considering your personal minimums, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you already mentioned that you have personal minimums because of the fuel. Mm -hmm. So that's perfect. I like that there. So, it, you know, thinking on that, you can expand that to think on other things. Oh, where else can like, I have personal minimums or buffer or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, right? In this case, you know, I probably would have calculated ground or total 50 foot obstacle, especially considering the fact that you're going to be going to your check ride in Arkansas. You've never been there before. You yeah. know what's at the airport, so you, you know wanna, what's around you, it, you know yeah, what the terrain wanna, is, mm -hmm. right? You know what's going on necessarily. So, you know, use the most conservative numbers, mm -hmm. right? Cool. All right, very good. All right, that sounds good there. Let's talk about some of this information you got. So you plan an altitude of? 2,500 feet. 25 or 35? Uh, on the way back, 35. On the way over here, it's the, over there. It was 25. 25. Oh, gotcha, okay. Yeah. All right, how did you come up with your altitude? Well, on the way over there, uh, I know, although I when you're going more west, or like on, on a map to the left, it's gonna be even plus 500. Although it doesn't start at 2,500, it starts at 4,500. And like in the 4,000s, I just, but I still, um, what's it called? I just made sure it was even. I was going northeast, so I was basically on the, going towards the right side, so that's gonna be odd plus 500. So I came up with the altitude, uh, that's, because that's basically the VFR altitude separate for like the separation. Okay, uh, how do you calculate that? Uh, so you said, so just so I can clarify here, you said basically from a heading of... It's going to be odd plus 500. Uh, from 180 to 3, it's going to be even plus 500. Okay. How do we calculate that? How do we know whether we're going east or west? Uh, whether we're going east or west? Wait, what do you uh, mean? Okay. Yeah. So I, I realized it was very vague. So let's say that you're flying direct south. Okay. How do you know, based on the information you're calculating, whether to fly at 3,500? or 4,500. How do you know you're going direct south? What, what do we base that on, the altitude? We base that on, on true north. We base that on true north. Okay, let me see if I can ask this. All right, let me pull something at, oopsies. And honestly, I'm checking this too because I wanna make sure I get the right, the right terminology here. Quick question, where would we go to find altitudes for direction? Altitudes for like VFR separation? Uh, no. Well, okay. Yes, VFR. Yeah. Where would you go to, to to know for sure what altitudes are? So you mentioned, you know, to the east. It, it, it would be in the far end. Very good. Okay. Good. Good. Excellent. All right. Do you know where in the far end? Should be in the 91 section since that 91 breaks the pilot. So that's the rules. All righty. Uh, let me just search for it. Let me see. There you go. That's the term I'm looking for. I don't have it tabbed out. That's fine. Yeah. 
Okay, so, I'll tell you, it's gonna be yeah. under 91159, so why don't you look at that one? Yeah. Okay, so, oh, it's pretty close. It's not something that, that is necessarily prevalent on a lot of people's minds. Yeah. Uh, it's not like the first thing that pops in your mind when you think of the regulations, but it is important. Yeah, if you have far altitude, uh, cruising altitude for flight, yeah. There for flight go. more than 3,000 feet uh, above the surface, shall maintain an appropriate altitude or flight level prescribed below unless otherwise authorized. Um, so basically on a magnetic course, so I was wrong, it's not untrue, it's on magnetic course. There we go, cool, oh, okay, well let's start, let's start with that. So based on magnetic course, mm -hmm. what is Magnetic course is basically, it's gonna be true core, first you have, it's gonna be basically true course, corrected for magnetic variation. True course? Or core, the ground, not true course, uh, the ground track. What's that called? Um, course. Yes. All right, let's see here. It's, it's, something, corre it's something corrected for magnetic variation. All right. You said magnetic. You said magnetic course. Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So let me let me get my thoughts together here because I want to make sure I ask this properly too. Let's see. All right. Hang on. Let me do a little research here. Oops. Okay. All right. Yeah. So okay. Hang on. See. So so uh, let me kind of back up, Jack. Um, this is kind of the part you can cut that whole part out there when we start talking about true course. Let me go back and ask this again. All right. Or when we talk about magnetic course. So let's ask this again. All right, so what is magnetic course? Magnetic course is basically, it's gonna be true course, basically we're like the ground track corrected for, say we have perfect winds, no nothing. Uh, it's gonna be corrected for magnetic variation. Yeah, there you go, okay, very good. So it has nothing to do with winds. Yeah, that's what right. I said. Has, like it's all, that, it's all yeah. based on true course corrected for uh, what we said, yeah, magnetic variation. Right, I want mm -hmm. to make sure I get the terminology correct, mm -hmm. uh, which is something I should know right at the top of my head, which I haven't done in a while. But anyway, that's okay. All right, so when you say, so this is kind of, we're kind of like taking a step back here away from, you know, the, the um, check ride for a minute here. Um, you know, when the examiner asks a question, you know, mm -hmm. feel free just to answer the question. You know, don't, don't kind of like start going off on all this rabbit trails and everything yeah. kind of like that. So, you know, just answer the question. And, and if you don't know it, that's okay. You can think through it or you can talk through it a little mm -hmm. bit, but you don't want to start spouting off, you know, just because information. Is it because like they're going to ask you about each? Yeah, like, okay, I mean, I definitely. They could definitely start picking and choosing and going, okay, how much does this guy actually know? And they can start digging in here and there. And not that we don't want them to dig, but we want to give clear, precise information yeah. for when, when we deliver our answer, right? So... When you say, you know, hey, what is magnetic course? Just, you know, you can be specific. Oh, it's true course based on magnetic variation, right? Mm -hmm. That clear cut answer gives it uh, very precisely. Uh, now, if you are a little confused on some of the weather, like whether it's uh, dependent on like the nose, which way the nose is mm -hmm. pointing, basically because of wind correction or whatever the case may be. I mean, it's not bad to say, well, I, I don't think it's based on that. It's, you know, it's going to be based only on true course and magnetic, you know, yeah. based on the magnetic, magnetic, magnetic variation. So you're just being clear and concise with your responses okay. uh, helps to kind of sharpen in and bring uh, the, uh, move the check right along and, and help the examiner see, oh yeah, okay, he knows his information and he just pass right on there. So just a little side note, you don't have to worry about, but all right, so we'll go back. We'll ask that question again. And the only reason why I bring this particular thing up is I'll just let you in on a little information. I busted one of my check rides based on this information, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so, because he asked me, so how do we get our altitude for the direction of flight? You know, what's it based on? Because we have some other stuff here, true course, true hitting, magnetic hitting, all that. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. kind of cool, right? But that's for navigation, right, necessarily. So then how do we determine the altitude we're gonna fly at based on our direction, right? So yeah, mm -hmm. that's so th that's one reason why I bring this up is because I want you to understand it. Yeah. It's not just, you know, we're not just flying on an altitude based on whatever the whatever we feel like, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which is fine. Earlier you stated it was an altitude of 4,500 feet that mm -hmm. we don't have to worry about for, you know, if we're at or below for odd plus, yeah, because, right? Yeah, because it starts, because it starts at 3,000. Right, there yeah. you go. So there I was like, go. that 2,500 feet, it's not really, I can like cruise at 2,000 feet if I absolutely. wanted to. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Like, um, Anything below 3,000. Yeah. Right? So cool. that's why I said it started at 4,500 feet. At least for, at least for going, going, what's it called? Eastward. Going eastward? I mean, westward. I mean. There you go. Yeah, okay, westward, cool. Westward. I see what you're saying. Okay, yeah. now I understand what you're saying when you yeah. say 4,500 feet. Okay, cool. But I guess yeah, that's, I, that's I, I do good. tend to ramble though. I yeah. do tend to run. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, which which is fine. Hey, uh -huh. that's why we're doing this, uh -huh. right? Because you can actually see how you perform in you know a check ride scenario here, yeah. where you can see, oh, 
you know, kind of cut down a little bit on your rambling. Yeah. You know, don't be afraid to give your answer. And then because they can, can, they can just like well, yeah, attack, it's, attack like little weak true. points. True, yeah, it, it's based on that, but but not fully. It's it's more of like the examiner is asking us a question. We want to give a clear, concise information, yeah, and without going all around all these rabbit holes that you know may or may not be necessary, right? Because especially you know earlier when we were talking about the VOR stuff. You kind of started going around and started rambling, and then we kind of, you actually kind of started talking about stuff you didn't really know, and that's okay. Yeah. You know, if you don't know it, don't don't bring it up. You know, not that you're you're lying or anything. My point is, is that when the examiner asks a question, if you don't know it, feel free to say so. It's like, oh, I don't know that. You know, I would have to look that up, and then he might he might mm-hmm. move on, or he might yeah. say, oh, well, why don't we look that up at this point in time? Just depends, right? VR is a great tool, but reality. I mean, you've got your nav points. If it were me, I probably would have just moved on and like, okay, that's fine. You know, it, he doesn't know that much about VOR, but he at least knows how to tune to it. He knows how to read it. That's all that's important at yeah. this point in time, right? Which is fine, right? Or I'm not sure if it's like... Yeah, yeah. Just... You know, because you know, it's just like, no, because I was proposing like an alternate, you know? Because yeah. like right here, I also have alternates, which are like these airports right here. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I propose an alternate VFR. Oh, yeah, not VFR, right. uh, VOR. VOR. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's always good to have an alternate yeah. VOR. That's fine. That's fine. But but there is actual distances where the FAA guarantees the reliability of the signal, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And you can actually find that in the far in, in the aim portion of the far aim mm-hmm. because it actually goes in there and talks about the VORs and the different uh, altitudes with the different distances based on you know what type of VOR was a high VOR, a low VOR, or whatever the case may be. So anyway, but that's okay. You didn't know that. That's fine. Yeah. Yo, if you don't know it, don't don't ramble on about something, mm-hmm. right? If if you don't know it, that's fine. Just stop. You know, say tell what you do know. Mm-hmm. And if you don't know, if he's asked specifically, so, oh, yeah. uh, well, I, actually, I don't know that. I'd have to look that up. Yeah. Or, you know, and then he could go one of two ways. Oh, let's look it up. Or, okay, fine, let's move on. Yeah. One of two things. So. Cool. Very good. All right. You're actually not doing too bad, dude. You're actually doing pretty good. Cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, you picked up on your rambling a little bit. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, if we want, Jack, we can kind of cut cut that little <laughs> portion and put it at the end for like a debriefing report. Because <laughs> I was like doing a little teaching here, which I'm not supposed to be doing. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm trying to just kind of like shut up and, and let you ramble <laughs> just yeah. so you can kind of see how you yeah. do that normally it is normally no, like, well, stop stop facing what not to do when i check <laughs> no actually no no you're doing you're doing yeah good, you're doing fine cool all right okay so let's kind of back up uh let's go all the way back to magnetic course mm-hmm. uh, so i'm going to ask you that again so what what north is the chart based off of True north. It's based on true north, right? Yeah. And we fly based on what in the aircraft? Uh, the compass. The magnetic compass. Yep. That's exactly right. So we have to do some conversion. Yeah, you do. Right? So we first start out with our true course, which mm-hmm. is based on... Uh, based on true north. Yeah, very mm-hmm. good. And then we correct for... for one correction yep. angle, you get that true heading, mm-hmm. and then uh, true heading for magnetic variation, and then you get that magnetic heading. And But the thing is, magnetic heading isn't good enough because you actually have a magnetic, like instrument in the yeah, what in do we call, call, that? call it compass uh, which has deviation deviation so you want to correct goes. for deviation okay compass heading together compass heading. Mm-hmm. and then you you align your your actual your heading indicator with the compass so you cool. will have to actually at what point in time would you do that you want to do that like every 15 10 15 minutes you know because sometimes okay the, when, when's the primary when's the primary time when we're oh primary there? time it should it should be what's called in the, when you're turning on the airplane in the, in the run up basically there you go you don't want to do it when you're like taxing stationary a little bit of turn so the compass can actually just have a chance to turn and then you correct the little indicator all right. cool all right very good so we talked about navigation we talked about performance a uh, little bit of weather kind of thrown in there kind of fun mm-hmm. which we'll kind of circle back around to weather a little bit. Let's talk about, let's kind of go back to this personal minimum thing, right? So mm-hmm. you mentioned that you have personal minimums for fuel burn and for, what was the other one you had? Runways. Uh, uh, there we go, runways, thank you. So let me let me say that again. Um, so let's talk about personal minimums, right? What specifically, as far as personal minimums and making sure you're yourself, you are prepared for a flight, are you gonna run through before you actually even walk out to the aircraft. Well, can you, can you ask that again? Yes, so, I will. Sorry, sorry. I, 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 my I'm bad. Sorry. My brain, my brain is like no, spinning. No, I, no, I zoned out. I, I kind of zoned <laughs> okay, out. Yeah. Let me back up. There we go. All right, let me ask you this. Yeah. So, what do you do personally to prepare mm-hmm. yourself for any given flight on any given day? Any given flight, I look at the METAR at the airport. Say I'm going on a cross country. I look at. Uh, I called one eight hundred W. Okay. Oh, this is perfect time stop. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. 
basically what I'm asking is, I'm asking for the I'm safe checklist, okay? Mm -hmm. And I did not ask that properly. So I'm gonna ask that again, okay? That's where I'm going, like, there we go. All right, we're rolling again. Let me get this going. I'm gonna back up and ask that question again. Cool, all right. Okay, so in preparation for any given flight, on any day, you know, like today, you might do a training flight or next week you might actually go out and do a cross country flight. How do you prepare yourself or what do you use to prepare yourself uh, for that particular flight? I like to use the acronym I'm safe. So I uh, is gonna be illness, M is gonna be medication, S is, and uh, S is gonna be, can I, uh, can I look in the in, sure, in my yeah. thing? Right? I can't use this on the checker, right? Yeah, you can, great. I mean, it is a check our document, so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, definitely can use it. Uh, I would have, a lot of your notes are really good in there. I would have maybe a separate piece of paper with the notes written on it maybe for reminders, but maybe not. I don't, I don't, I don't think I, I, I can... talk to your, talk to your. Uh, okay. Yeah, talk to your flight instructor about that. Uh, we'll cut this part out too, but uh, basically, yeah. Stress, there it is. There you stress, go, okay. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I'm safe checklist. Yeah, that's, that's a good one to memorize. Okay, so. Uh, that's fine. You can close that up. Yeah, because um, uh, when I was talking to my friend, he was like, oh yeah, you can write whatever you need. Or you can use this. On okay. Paper. That's why like this, I can't, like if I, he said you gotcha. can't bring a separate piece of paper. That's what he told me. Gotcha. Was, like gotcha. this, okay. I can't, this is like actually my notes. Like I have pedostatic system, all that, all the other systems in there, hydraulic systems. Okay. Um, I can't use that. That's because it's not like Jaguar material. At least that's what I was told. Okay, okay, yeah. that's fine. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll go with that. Because like for me, when I, I know when I was prepping my students, I would, like if I was actually going to do a flight, I would actually have a checklist for me and I would like go down the checklist and everything based on Pat's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge or mm -hmm. whatever the case may be, you know, pulled right out of that and I would have a checklist separate for that. Um, I, don't, I don't think, personally, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think there's anything wrong with going into the check ride with something like that. Yeah. Being able to say, hey, look, this is my checklist. That's right out of the P-Hack, and this is what I went through to make sure I'm good for my flight oh, today. Oh, okay. Like oh, like that. Okay, I got exactly. you. Exactly. I, yeah. I thought it was like actual notes. Yeah, yeah no, right, no. This is my checklist. Right, Like yeah, a exactly. personal minimum checklist. Exactly. I got you, yes. that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Oh, okay, uh, that, that, I, I can, I can yeah. see why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, notes, yeah, don't want to have Kind of going with notes into a check ride. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I shouldn't have said that. But like check but, check. But I, but yeah, I, I get having what you're your own saying. Personal yeah. minimums checklist or something, which I think the FAA actually produces some sort of checklist yeah, like that or whatever yeah. the case may be. So yeah, there's nothing wrong with going in like that. I go yeah. You're kidding. Here's all the stuff I prep for, man. You think I'm just gonna go out and fly a plane? I'm not even ready. I don't even know if I'm ready. I got my checklist right here, right? <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you can bring this in. You can use that. That's fine. Whatever the case may be. Cool. All right. So. Backing up a little bit, uh, going back to the I'm safe checklist. Uh, let's talk about a few of those things in the I'm safe checklist. All right, first of all, it's alcohol. So, mm -hmm. so what do you mean by alcohol? What, what do we talk about uh, when we're discussing alcohol? So you can't have, you can't fly a plane if you drank alcohol in the past eight hours. Most people have like minimums of like 24 hours just to be safe. And for a blood alcohol level, it can't be any more than 0.04%. Okay, what uh, about stress? You mentioned stress, so what, what are we talking about when we talk about that? Stress is just like, from anything really. If you have like, say, just like the example in the beginning of my check ride, it's like that, that bathroom, that's, that's a form of stress, you know? If you have like any medical conditions, that's, that's stress. Stress is very broad, you know? If you have any family issues, if you, if you're basically not in the right mindset to fly a plane, you know, if you have very... You mentioned uh, some hazardous attitudes, right? So, so give me an example. What would be a hazardous attitude? And like uh, anti-authority, okay. macho, uh, like you can't get hurt. Okay. Basically, they're just feeling that, that you're in invincible. Basi basically, you're just, you oppose rules, you oppose the, okay, the natural let's, let's order of things let's... and just... Let's focus on the uh, the rule one, which you talked mm -hmm. about. Anti-authority? The, the anti-authority, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what would be a remedy for that? So yeah, you mentioned it's gonna be, you know, not following the rules, not uh, why do I have to do this? You mm -hmm. know, why, why do I have to follow the regulations? Whatever yeah. the case may be. So what would be an antidote to that? Basically, you wanna, first of all, you wanna get educated. Go get caught up on the regulations, the, the rules. Also, take a step back humble yourself and look at the repercussions that can actually happen because you might lose your cert if you do something wrong you can lose your certification you can't be a pilot anymore you know so you just want to look at the regulations and look at the consequences of those actions okay so basically we're gonna i take our attitude and say no these rules are here for a reason mm -hmm. i need to follow the rules yeah. and take a step back and be, mm -hmm. like you said be humble cool all right very good all right so that's good for that 
Uh, what is the difference? So we talked a little bit about personal minimums. Uh, let's kind of shift it and go along that same line. Let's talk about currency versus proficiency, mm -hmm. right? First of all, currency. All right, so you're taking me as we on our flight from here to Waco or whichever lake we did, I can't remember. You're taking me on a flight uh, from Waco to Redbird and now I'm, I'm considered a passenger. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Now you're a private pilot at this point in mm -hmm. time. So what are the currency requirements in order for you to be able to take me as a passenger? Do you have to get off the runway in order to do that? For for a full stop? For a full stop. Yeah, for a full stop taxi. Yeah, you have to get off the runway. Yeah, I have to go. Is there is there a way we could do a full stop without getting off the runway? You can do a 180. If it's like if if it's like a really calm day like wind wise traffic wise like i guess just no you got to go taxi back <laughs> get, on off the runway. Yeah, get off the runway okay well let's talk about what, sure. what are some of the things we can do when coming into land uh at a particular on a particular runway right so mm -hmm. going down to waco waco's controlled okay so tower is what does uh tower say in your, when you're in the downwind what do you expect to hear from them? The Skyhawk 915 at Hotel, uh, clear, uh, clear to land, land runway 14. Cool. What does that landing clearance give you clearance to do? It gives me clearance to uh, just land. Land? Yeah. Anything else? Uh, if you, it also gives you clearance to, basically it gives you clearance for the whole runway. You can do a, a go around if it calls for it or also a touch go. and go as well. All right, cool. Well, uh, not necessarily touch and go, right? If he says clear to land, uh -huh. right? So that's very different than oh. a touch and go, right? Yeah. The, cause he's expecting you to land and stop and get off. Yeah. Right. Cool. So, um, there's actually, do you know a couple of different things? So you talked about landing, you talked about touch and go, you talked about go around. Do you know if there's anything else to that? When I'm clear to land, what the clearance or what else air, air traffic control could say, or what could you request? That's more, actually more accurate. I can, I can request a wind check. Okay, true. Yep. You can request a wind check. Good. Very good. That, that helps with uh, alignment. With I could re request in like a, a full stop taxi back. If ah, I'm... full stop taxi back. Good. Yeah. Very good. And you could actually request a stop and go. A stop and go. You can. Yes. You can request a stop and go. So stop and go is basically where you land on the runway, stop, and then take off again. Oh, okay. Yeah. So something... So it's a little information there. That's what you were trying to point. That's before. what I was trying. Yeah, I <laughs> I've actually never heard of a stop and go. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah. fine. It's not very common, especially yeah. in like a higher traffic uh, situation. You you wouldn't want to request that. It's not, yeah, yeah. Uh, not the wisest for uh, traffic flow and such, whatever the case may be. But anyway, that's kind of like beside the point. <laughs> so you see how you can kind of go down the road, yeah. with different things and mm -hmm. stuff. But that's fine. But also, the reason I also brought up those uh, those what's it called those hazardous attitudes was because I was ready to be questioned on those that's why very good like cool I, I was confident in them but the other ones i can just like just like right now i kind of rambled on i didn't really know what i was when i was saying that's why i just said my i just told myself no just get off the runway and taxi back that's fine yeah like after i said that I mean, 180 and all yeah, that when stuff in doubt, you know? when in doubt just get off the runway right i mean yeah because that's what a landing clears you to do it clears you to for a go around mm -hmm. obviously because why why would we need to go around necessarily what would be a good reason to go around if you don't like the approach that's a good reason if you are say you're a new pilot you're too nervous for this landing go around you know because uh, and then say you have a bad landing, you're bouncing, you're about, you don't want to, because once you bounce, that bounce is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. That's what happened on my first couple of flights. My, I almost killed my instructor. Man, I remember <laughs> What's that. What's he doing over there going, ah! Literally, just, it was just, literally just <laughs> bouncing. It was like, we're, we're about to have a prop strike. If you bounce, if you have that first bounce, I'm not sure what the term is called, but you want to immediately full power go around because that's just going to, you're going to increase your likelihood of a, of a prop strike. There you go. Cool. Yeah. yeah. It, it increased if, likelihood of aircraft damage and yeah. uh, potentially uh, Killing physical yourself. injury, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. So uh, you don't like the approach, you're unstable, mm -hmm. right? Where it was, we're established in a nice a steady glide and on air speed. Like one time I did a go around line. like 600 feet in the air. I know it, yeah. was, it was really because it was extremely windy. It was like 18 knot cro like crosswind and uh, and it was just really hard to descend or it was just, the approach was really bad. I was like, all right, just go around. I just try that again. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good, very good, excellent. All right, cool. Let's see, let's see. We talked about that. Dun, 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 dun. All right, let's move on to uh, some pre-flight information, right? So we talked about the I'm safe, so you're physically ready to go, you've dealt with all the stress, you've mm -hmm. dealt with, you know, you haven't had alcohol in the last so many hours, so you're good to go as far as that's concerned. So yeah. that's personal yeah. 
preparation, right? What about aircraft preparation? So what do we need to do to verify that our aircraft is indeed ready for a particular flight? You want to do a walk around. Uh, you want to make sure all your equip, uh, you have all the right instruments. Very good. Like cool. to, I like what to kind use... of equipment do we need to be able to operate our day VFR flight from Waco to Redbird? I like to use the acronym A Tomato Flames. Okay. A is going to be the airspeed indicator, indicator, and then tachometer, oil pressure, magnetic compass, oil temperature. The other uh, is going to be E is like ELT. The other E is like any emergency equipment, which it's not on some lists. It's on like, I've, I've, it's just because I've, uh, when I was like just doing research, some people didn't have that extra E. You know, it only had like one E, which is ELT, but I have that extra E to say like flying over water, flotation devices, all that stuff. T is the, not, not transport, not that. Uh, let's move on to L. That's uh, what's called landing light indicator, landing gear indicator light. Do you uh, have that in your Cessna 170? No, no, because that's, that's like, Okay, no. cool. Uh, what's called the engine temperature? Temperature gauge right here. Okay. Which, um, it's like in. It's not in my Cessna. I don't have a temperature gauge, but okay. it's like if you if your uh, if your plane has a temperature gauge. Okay. Cool. All right. It's gonna be a fuel fuel gauge. Cool. Well, let's yeah. move on. Let's talk about uh, some of the documents required for the aircraft. So we talked about a little bit about the equipment. Mm -hmm. Uh, what documents are going to be required for the uh, aircraft to make sure it's airworthy? So it's going to be airworthiness, registration. Yep. It's going to be airworthiness, uh, registration. Radio op operators permit, which is which it, people that's that's like if you're flying like internationally, and not not many not many people have that. Um, okay. Especially me, I don't I don't have that. All right. Uh, so it gets missed all the time. POH and then weight and balance. All right. We're, POH weight and balance, and you mentioned the weight and balance. Where do we find that? Uh, that's going to be the in the POH. POH. Very good. Cool. All right. Excellent. Uh, how long is the registration good for? A registration is it's good uh, indefinitely. Okay. All righty. Let's move on to some, let's see, how much time do we got here? 10 to 6. Do you want to take a quick break? And because I kind of need to use the restroom here. So. Yeah, you can. I just have to like head out at like 1025 because that's- Oh, 1025? Yeah, I have to go. Oh, my bad. I'm oh, no. so sorry. No, it's all good. I was thinking 11, dude. I am so sorry. No, no. You had to go at 1025, dude. I'm so sorry. No, it's all good. All right, here I am just like dragging his ass thinking I had more time. <laughs> My bad. Of course, you're going to tell your examiner that. Oh, Mr. Examiner, I can only do uh... it. Totally, totally joking, dude. <laughs> totally joking. All right. Uh, let's do this real quick. Let's see. Let's talk about last thing here. All right. Let me ask you this one last question. So before we go fly, uh, we talked about personal rooms. We talked about uh, and readiness. Talk about the aircraft. Make sure documents, everything is ready to go. What must we know legally, all information required before we actually go fly? Do you know that list? Legally? Yes. If you don't, that's okay. It's, the NW, it's NW craft, right? Uh, yes. Yes, NW craft. Yes. So R is going to be here. So that's okay. Yeah. Where, where would you go to find it? NW craft is far, and it would be in the far. Okay, game. good. Do you, do you know exactly what number? What number? No, I don't actually. I okay. I tapped out. Good. All right. That's fine. Cool. All right. Very good. Probably tab it on. Actually. Okay. What number is it? Uh, it's going to be one, uh, 103. 103. I need one 103. Yeah. Yeah, I don't have it tabbed out. Okay. Well, that's fine. It's 96. Let's see. Oh, it's. Here we go. Oops. Yeah. So you got, yeah, one applicability, 17, 113, 107. 107. Back one. Well, oh, look at that. You got it highlighted. Oh, I have it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I do have it. Cool. Good for you, dude. That's the pave. That's pre-flight pave. There you go. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. so you filed it in mentally under the pave. Yeah, acronym. I did. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Cool. 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 All right. Uh, so yeah, being able to to uh, kind of correlate some of those questions that the examiner may ask based on information, what you have studied. Yeah, absolutely, man. Go for it. That's good. Is it a bad thing that I'm looking in here? No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, you, you made notes on it, obviously. You're studying. You know what to look for. As long as you know where to go to find the original information. Like the original information. Yeah. Because like, this, yeah. this is a bit, this is better than I just Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Things like PAVE and, you know, I'm safe. Uh, that's going to be in the, the handbook of aeronautical knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. Those types of checklists. So it, it, it it's not... It's not bad to write it in something like this, mm -hmm. but but something like that where you have your NW craft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like that's an basically what I've what I've had what I've had yeah. to look for in here is basically like all of today is just the acronyms. Mm -hmm. So next time I just have to pull up with with my minimum equipment, not minimum, uh, with my minimums uh, checklist mm -hmm. and just have this on there. There you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. just just start working through that. Uh, the like I said, he's going to direct 
the flow of the oral in the direction he wants to get the responses that he wants to hear from you. Mm -hmm. It's very obvious to me that you are uh, studying, you're preparing, uh, mm -hmm. you know a lot of information, you know where to go to find it, and that's good. Uh, some of the some of the ideas you want to be able to condense a little bit, maybe like you mentioned before, don't necessarily don't ramble. ramble. Yeah. Give the answer and then let the examiner ask the next question, right? Um, I know sometimes it's it's hard when you have an examiner sitting here and he's not saying anything and you're like, should I be saying something? Did I yeah, say I know. Did I not say enough? Did I say too much? Yeah, because I mean, so you start, mm -hmm. then you start ping ponging in, in your mind going like, okay, what, what am I doing wrong here? Yeah. When in reality, you may have simply just given the right answer and he's stopping to think of what he wants to, what he wants to talk about next, right? I mean, it, it could be any number of things, yeah. right? any number of scenarios. So cool, all right. A uh, couple things on just some of the information uh, that uh, you were giving me. I, I think it's awesome, dude, that you know performance, you know how to go to get your, your fuel burn and your headings, and uh, even we even talked real lightly about the, what was, I, what was I thinking of? What did we touch on? We touched on, or something else we touched on, I can't remember. Ah, well, whatever. Interesting. Anyway, okay, so kind of going back to this performance chart, right? There's no problem with being in the utility category, dude. No problem whatsoever. So you're absolutely right. In the utility category, you can ex uh, execute a little more aggressive maneuvers, right? Yeah. All this is telling you is that if you ex ex uh, execute those specific more aggressive maneuvers, you want to make sure that the aircraft is within this particular utility, window, yeah. Yeah. right? So other than that, this normal category, see, normal category includes this utility category too. So there's nothing wrong. The, the, the whole point of the weight and balance is to verify that you're actually within this envelope. Yeah. If you're within this envelope, it doesn't matter whether you're in utility or normal, if you're operating under the normal idea, you can be in utility, it's no problem, right? What that is there. Yeah, so there's that. Let's see, we talked about uh, use of the FAA chart uh, for navigation. Always use FAA material, like I think we mentioned that before. You pulled up the four flat, four flight diagram, airport diagram, which you wanna make sure you pull up the FAA okay. diagram. Mm -hmm. And then you mentioned that you said you like to use uh, for your chart, and we didn't even get to charts today, right? Like being able to look at the chart and go, hey, what's this, what's this, and that's fine. Uh, but you mentioned you like to use, what do you like to use? You like to use the aerial map or something like that? Yeah, don't say that. Yeah, no. You, you want to use the VFR chart, mm -hmm. all right? So especially in a check ride, that's what the examiner is looking for. He doesn't want to, I mean, you can say I supplement it with the aerial map because that oh. is exactly what I'm going to be looking for. I want to see what these landmarks actually look like, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But when I'm flying, what chart do I use? I use that. I use the sectional chart, sectional right? Chart. Yeah, exactly. So you want to use the FAA material, right? Um, but yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with either even telling the examiner, yeah, hey, I use the chart supplement when I fly. I, I overlay it with this aerial map as well So I, before I fly so I know exactly what I'm looking for as far as the landmarks. It's a great tool that ForeFlight has that we have that I didn't have. 20 years ago when I was doing my private cross countries, all I had was a paper sectional, dude, that yeah. and a plotter, that's it, dude, that's all I had, <laughs> right? And so it's really cool that we have this aerial option. But if, if you do say something like that, that's fine. Just make sure you say, oh, I just supplement it with this, you know, type of a thing. Mm -hmm. So we wanna use, uh, make sure you use the FAA information stuff. Um, yeah, you're using the ACS, you got the far end, that's great. You've got all your things too. Something he might bring up, uh, that I thought about um, that I wasn't necessarily going to say anything on, but uh, what happens if your phone dies in the aircraft? And now what are you mm -hmm. looking at? I mean, do you have a way to navigate? Do you have, do you have your... I have a GPS. Yeah, right okay. now I have a GPS. In yeah, the cool, cool. I, I might even suggest saying, oh yeah, hey, I carry a paper chart with me just in case, mm -hmm. you know, because electronic things do happen, right? Aircraft, yeah. like I've had my phone die. I've, I've had my iPad die on me in flight. Not, not because of battery, because it crashed. It's like, oh crap, and I'm trying to restart it and go mm -hmm. on, you know, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But you're right, you got you got the, the uh, GPS navigation, which is fun. Yeah. You know? So if you use a digital thing, I'd, I'd recommend, you know, mentioning, oh yeah, hey, I have this backup too. Uh, only if he asks. Like you said, don't ramble. He doesn't need to know that uh, necessarily unless he asks, right? Yeah, hey, I use this on my phone. Great, okay, well, do you have a backup? Oh yeah, I got a backup right here. Okay, great, moving on, you know, type of a thing. So yeah, uh, make sure again, you just use FAA material. VOR reliability, that's in the AIM. Um, I, I won't take time to actually go look it up now, but you can actually see, I think I mentioned it before, the different uh, rings and uh, distances and altitudes for what they test the VOR at and they guarantee its reliability signal for this particular uh, VOR because they have high VORs, they got low VORs, and, and both of them are, are different altitudes and yeah. distances and such. Uh, we already talked about that. Temperature, oh, this is what I wanted to bring up. Okay, so real quick, if you pull up, not you, I'll pull it up here for you. So you mentioned 
I can't really zoom it in, but you're talking about the 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 temperature. Yeah, I right? I remembered it was dew point spread. There it you go. Very spread, good. Yeah. So good, good. Okay, so dew point spread, right? In this particular case, it's pretty darn close. Yeah, right? that so, is. So what could we expect with something like that? But it would be low ceilings. Yeah, right. You could expect to say, oh well, maybe maybe it it uh, I could potentially be coming into some weather as I fly mm -hmm. towards Waco, right? Yeah. And keep that in the back of your mind going, okay, well, maybe I need to have a diversion plan, which you already talked about diversions earlier, mentioning that, hey, yeah, I had to use the restroom and boom, I had to divert because I, uh, you know, was starting to get a little, starting to affect my piloting abilities, yeah. right? He's going to talk about, he's going to throw an emergency scenario at you. Like, uh, I was going to use weather today, so you're flying down to Waco and you start to notice a cloud billowing up in front of you, right? What could that potentially be? Thunderstorm. Yeah. yeah. I got... I have uh, what's called Hillsborough Municipal. I got Midway. There you just go. Turn around, cool. Go yeah, back. or yeah. just turn around, and go right back. Yep. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, very good. Excellent. Uh, chart so when we talk about that. <clears throat> oh, interpolation. So you mentioned with the. Where is it? I'm trying to finish this up here real quick, dude. Do you actually have to leave like in five minutes? It's it's not bad. Like, okay, well, say, I'll I'll just be like I'll just get an excuse to call. I'll just get what? A, a, so you have to go. Huh? I don't want to give you this. I don't. Dude. No, no, no. I have, I'm so sorry. I have like four days left of school. I have. I don't do. I'm not doing anything today in school. It's just attendance. Oh, dude. so I'll just. I am so sorry. No, no, it's fine. This is more important. This is so we'll we'll do this instead. Well, okay. it's fine. It's fine. I am Actually, so sorry, dude. No, no, don't worry about it. I got All like right. four days of school left. It's fine. Okay. Well, anyway, so performance interpolation. So you mentioned like cutting it in half, right? Between 10 degrees or 20 degrees and 30 degrees, mm -hmm. cutting it right in half, which is pretty darn close because it was 24 degrees, that's fine. Uh, if you're going more closer to like 27 or 23 or 22 or something, interpolation is actually taking the difference between the two, calculating uh, how much uh, each degree would vary mm -hmm. and then taking that into account. But anyway, that's okay, you can talk about something else. Uh, performance altitude, uh, oh, we talked about the altitudes there, magnetic core, SAM safe checklist, BFR equipment. Um, stuff like that, I would kind of sharpen up a little bit, make sure you know I'd be able to rattle that off uh, for the examiner and the check ride. Document registration. Registration is, I think they just upped it to seven years. Yeah, I know that's, that's five. Yeah, it used is to it be, seven years? Yeah, it's seven years. Okay, now. all right. I, uh, I remember my instructor asked me about that. I was like, oh, it used to be five years, but not seven years. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember it. Cool. Wait, you said what, rattle, rattle off what? The acronyms? Yeah, well, be, be, be a little more familiar with them. Yeah, uh, there's yeah, nothing yeah. wrong with, with actually writing them down while yeah. you're talking about them, mm -hmm. uh, but I would do it a few more times uh, before you get to your check ride. Just yeah. make sure you're pretty mm -hmm. sharp on that. Mm -hmm. And he can ask about it. He may not even ask about it, which a lot of times they don't. They just say, oh, what's this and what's that and whatever the case may be. But anyway, yeah, I mean, you're, you're well on your way, dude. Uh, like one or two more mock orals where we can verify all this other information that we didn't even cover today mm -hmm. is, is good. How much more know, did we have to cover? Oh, dude, we had a lot more to cover. <laughs> a lot more, day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, I could have gotten over a whole, like, a buttload more. I could literally be doing this, like, eight hours, no problem. Like, it's, it, there's yeah, but so much information. The no, no, I know. I'm talking about, like, realistically, like, how much more topics would we have covered? Well, let's see. We didn't even talk about, we didn't even talk about airspace. We didn't talk about yeah, was, airports, uh, necessarily. We talked about a, that a little bit. We, we talked about cross medical factors, special yeah. emphasis areas, emergency. We, we, we talked weather. about qualifications. We, we talked about, uh, uh, airworthiness requirements. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We talked about. Yeah, we talked a little bit. Is good. So that's how a check card is going to go. It's mm -hmm. going to be these little few select topics that the examiner. Yeah, it's gonna not going to be like going down the list. Exactly. Not, no, yeah. no, no. But for me, as far as a instructor preparing you for a check card, I would definitely go over all of this. Oh yeah, for to sure. To make sure you're ready to go yeah. because he could pull out the information wherever he needs to mm -hmm. do so. But yeah, I mean, we didn't we didn't even cover weather or how to talk about that. We didn't. Yeah. We didn't, we, yeah, there's we, more yeah, navigation we, were, we, were, we could yeah, have we gone over. Yeah, we to cover like uh, airspace, like uh, McPron and... Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, Operation systems, we didn't even talk about a single system today. Uh, oh, yeah. I literally like took instruments. these... Instruments. Uh, we talked a little bit about the magnetic compass, which yeah. is an instrument. You know, check that off. I took these like notes yesterday, like this is the vacuum. There you go. Sucks. Good, it's a hydraulic good. system and then like mm -hmm. the pedostatic system. Like this is all like... I, sw I slept at like 2.30 a.m. last night. <laughs> yeah. Good, like, like, good. Like, yeah. Basically, oh, and that's how the check is going to go. It's going to be... You're going to get through the oral and you're going to like that that's it you didn't even talk about this or this and, and it's just gonna be like okay yeah no the examiner he just wants to make sure you're gonna be a safe legal pilot yeah that's what he's looking for and he has different things that he's gonna ask and he's gonna know what to what to look for to search to verify that you know the information that you need to know and if not you know where to find it yeah which is what you proved to me today so definitely yeah I mean I'd, I'd say you're definitely getting ready for a check right I would do one or two mock orals with you just to verify all the other information more of probably a question and answer just to make sure you have it down mm -hmm. um, sharpen up some of the information we went over today yeah. so that you're able to rattle it off or if not you know be able to write it down and say it as you go mm -hmm. but otherwise as far as performance navigation 
you know, it's it's uh, I'd, like the I'd scenario. The scenario stuff was pretty good. It's, yeah. just, it's just like the little fact, or not the yeah. facts, like the just the information, like along the way. Mm-hmm. I yeah. got you. 